In this first segment, which we call our feature article, we'll be discussing the last chapter of Dave Hunt's latest book, Judgment Day, Islam, Israel, and the Nations. Dave, last week we said that we were getting very close to Armageddon. And I don't know if that got anybody out there excited, but uh, Hmm. I think you better spell it out exactly what you meant by that. Well, of course, uh, we are at least seven years away (laughs) uh, from my understanding, a pre-trib rapture. So the rapture will occur first. Take the true Christians out of here. Mm-hmm. Which is eminent, could happen any time. It could happen any moment. Nothing is required uh, before that event. Uh, that will leave this world, well, shattered. Uh, why? They, they're not going to miss them. Be more jobs for everybody. Look at all the money they've left behind mm-hmm. and so forth. But yeah. there will be loved ones. But Yes, but a new sense of destiny will overtake them. The Bible says they will be given a strong delusion to believe the lie. No one will think that they were raptured. Uh, that is only uh, with the exception of those who are going to believe in Jesus. So there will be some during that time who will believe in Christ. But, David, you've mentioned more than likely not anyone who has heard the gospel and has had an opportunity to receive the gospel. I don't think so, Tom. I can't be um, dogmatic about that. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 says, mm-hmm. For this cause God will send them a strong delusion to believe a lie. Mm-hmm. Those who refuse to receive the love of the truth and have pleasure in unrighteousness. So exactly what that means in terms of how many times did I hear the gospel? Did I really reject it? Uh, was I ignorant of it? I don't know. That's in God's hands. But I certainly would not suggest to anyone, well, you're okay. You, If you want to reject Christ now, then when the rapture occurs, then you'll know it's all true. And then you can believe that will be time enough. Mm-hmm. You'll have a strong delusion. Dave, you know, that reminds me of... Uh... Constantine back in the fourth century. Supposedly, he was uh, became a Christian, but as I understand it, uh, historians tell us that he wasn't baptized until just before his death because he wanted to make sure that he would instantly go to heaven, which is uh, you know mainly a teaching of Roman Catholicism. In other words, he thought that baptism saved him. Right. And he wanted it to happen just before he died, so he wouldn't have time to sin. Exactly. In other words, it's a procrastination kind of thing to cover yourself. So now people may be thinking, well, great, I can just live as I would, you know, and then when I see uh, these events take place, then I'll turn to Christ. But I don't see that happening. I wouldn't recommend that. The Bible says you'll be given a strong delusion to believe the lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the true Christians are gone. The world is in panic Nobody believes it's the rapture. Where did they go? Who took them? Why didn't they take me? You know, and we live in the day of space travel and all these space films, beam me up, Scotty. The explanation could very well be some rogue civilization out there snatched slaves from this planet, and who knows, they may come back for me later. Why didn't they get me the first time? Mm -hmm. So the world will be in a panic like we cannot even imagine, Tom. We, I believe in the rapture. I believed in the rapture all my life. But when you think of what would actually happen, people vanishing right out of elevators, off of escalators, out of cars, from the desk next to you at work or, or whatever, and by the millions, they're gone. And a strong delusion is given from God himself to believe a lie Uh, the lie, what that lie will be, I don't know. But it's, of course, the lie that denies the gospel. Mainly, that's the real problem. Dave, how does strong delusion work? Is this, would this be against their will? Or, you know, is God imposing something on them that they then won't be held accountable? I don't believe so. We see examples of it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, he gave them up to their own lusts. He gave them the desire of their heart. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 1. And uh, you want to live that way? Okay, God says, I'll help you. You want to reject Christ, and you have done it so often, there's no way to turn you back. I'll help you 
do it. And so this is what these people want. They do not want to believe the gospel. They do not want to believe the truth. They have refused to receive the love of the truth. Well, then God will help them in that. You didn't want to believe this was the truth. Well, now I'll give you some good reasons, uh, some delusions for not believing it, mm -hmm. and you can continue on uh, in that. And at that point, there is no hope whatsoever. These people have crossed the line where God is not going to bother with them anymore except to help them believe the lie that they want to believe. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with Pharaoh. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Well, not at the very beginning. Why did he harden Pharaoh's heart? Because the point came where these plagues were terrifying, and Pharaoh was willing to let the people go, but for the wrong reasons. His heart was not changed. Mm -hmm. He would only do it out of fear, and that's when God hardened his heart, and the word in the Hebrew means he gave him the moral stamina, uh, imm immoral, right, the backbone, mm -hmm. to continue to do what he wanted to do. He was frightened. He, he wouldn't have done it, but now he's got the stamina to do it. And, and it's the same way at this point in the Great Tribulation, in my, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We've come a long ways in history. Of course, the ultimately, the temple, I think very quickly, the temple will be rebuilt, and uh, the Antichrist will pose as the friend of Israel, the Bible says, through peace he will destroy many. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll think he is on their side, but he's really building this temple, mm -hmm. authorizing them to do it. I, I think actually the Dome of the Rock will be moved. We talked about that, I believe. Right. But because he is going to put his own image in the temple mm -hmm. and demand the world to worship him as God, which in fact the world will do. Mm -hmm. Dave, we, we've talked about how many things uh, with regard to the Antichrist, uh, it, it just doesn't appear overnight. This doesn't happen as soon as he comes on the scene. There's preparation for that. And we also mentioned how the church, believing church, is subjected to these kinds of things. Uh, you have an apostate church that's in development, and there's a seduction involved, and true believers can be seduced by that. Seduced up to a point. Yeah. And it says, if it were possible, right. even the elect could be deceived. In other words, what the, the miracles that the Antichrist will do will be very, very convincing. But true believers are not going to be here at that point when he comes. But the forerunners, uh, you get in... Um, in First John uh, chapter 2, around verse 18, it says there are many antichrists in the world. We know antichrists will come, but there are already many. So these would be the forerunners, and as, as you're saying, preparing the false church, not the true church. Mm -hmm. But there could be even some true believers who are deluded, deceived. Well, having not a love of the truth, some of us may try to isolate some area and be dogmatic about it or fall into some delusion, although, you know, we, we know the Lord, but we can be subjected to that just because my heart wants to hold on to something that's not of the Lord, you know, and the Lord's going to say, okay, Tom, if that's what you want, go for it. But Dave, about the temple, do you think any of those things are going to take place prior to the rapture or will this come about afterward? No, I do not believe the temple could be rebuilt before the rapture because, wow, the whole uh, Muslim world would be up in arms, mm -hmm. and Israel would not even try to do that, I don't believe. So the rapture is the event that terrifies the world to such an extent. The Muslims are terrified. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's terrified. I mean, where did these people go? Why didn't they take me? And so forth. We cannot even imagine the terror on this world. That is in my opinion, Tom, the only catalyst, the only event that could catapult this man into power, a man whom the world will now worship as though he were God, uh, it will take this event to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, Tom, we were we started out by saying we, we want to deal with the question we raised at the end of the last program, how close are we? <laughs> What evidence is there that we're getting close? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scripture in Isaiah. Let me read it. Uh, verse 8 of chapter 66, the last chapter in Isaiah. Amazing scriptures here. 
Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Nations don't suddenly come into existence. Uh, it takes time. People gather there, you know. And, and I mean, you could go into the history of nations, and it's taken a long take, time. Take the United States. Right. There's a lot of a lot that happened to bring this to pass. But this nation, Israel, was born at once, born in a day. Well, first of all, there was the uh, Declaration of the United Nations, UN Resolution 181, uh -huh. November 47, authorizing them to become a nation. That's rather interesting. But um, the most interesting part of the Scripture is, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. I don't know of any greater travail for Zion, as speaking of Israel, uh -huh. I don't know of any greater travail for Zion than to lose six million of her sons and daughters to Hitler in the Holocaust. Had it not been for the Holocaust, I know for sure, it certainly wouldn't happen today. Had it not been for the Holocaust and the momentary twinge of conscience uh, on the part of the nations of this world, the United Nations would never have authorized Israel to exist. They would never have partitioned that land. Of course, they only gave Israel 13% of what belongs to her. But at least they did that much. And so UN Resolution 191 voted the partition of Israel. And it gave the go-ahead. The British pulled out. It gave the go-ahead for uh, David Ben-Gurion to declare the independent state of Israel, the birth of it, May 14th, 1948. So that's rather interesting. As soon as Zion travailed, well, that travail had just, just ended. And then it goes on, and God says, Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Now, Israel, although it was born in a day, it's fullness, you might, you could say. The full birthing of Israel is a process, and it hasn't been going well so far. They've been losing territory because in defiance of what God said, and we've gone over this in the past, Joel 3, verse 2, God says, I'm going to punish all the nations of this world for dividing my land. Every peace proposal, Israel will give them more land, okay? So it's been kind of going downhill, well, there is a process going on. It involves some more travail, the suicide bombers, the, the wars, and so forth. But that birthing process is going on now. And, and if we went to Christ's words in Matthew 24, he talked about the signs in the last days, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Really, it's the ethnic group against ethnic group, and we're seeing these. And then it says, all these are but the beginning of sorrows. And the word for sorrows there in the Greek is kind of like uh, the birth pangs of a woman. As she's getting ready to give birth, they come more frequently and with greater intensity. And I think we're accelerating. But notice what God says. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith the Lord? Now, we've come a long ways in history to get to this point. Israel is back in her land. Israel is surrounded by enemies, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 2, who are all united against her, first time in history. And they are united against Israel in order to destroy her. Never before have they been. I don't want to go back over that ground. But Israel had many enemies. Never were they all united. They are all united now. They used to fight one another. And they would if it weren't for Israel. Uh, that's the only thing that unites them. But it is Islam that unites these people. And remember Muhammad's declaration that all Jews must be destroyed. Israel must be annihilated. So uh, when Ahmadinejad, the president of of Iran uh, recently said, uh, well, 
you know, Israel must be wiped off the map. Well, there's not an Arab map in the world that even shows Israel. This is nothing new. They've been saying it for a long time. Okay? Dave, I just want to underscore one thing that you said. What unites them? We want our listeners, now our viewers, to, to remember, what do we have to the south? We have Egyptians. What do we have to the north and to the east? Persians, really, Babylonians and so on. Assyrians, just directly to the north. They've been fighting each other for, you know, for a century. Right. And now they're united. Right. Amazing prophecy. In Islam. God said they would be. Right. And that he would make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to the neighbors around and a burdensome stone. Okay? Why is this? Well, Israel happens to be the best in the world, the idea of Israeli defense forces. They have nuclear missiles, as we've mentioned. They can launch multi-war-headed missiles from submarines. Okay? Uh, they have the best missile defense system in the world the Arrow 2. It can knock missiles out of the sky way, I don't know, about 60 miles up there. And I think the Patriot can only get up about 20 miles, something like that. But we talked about it but, uh, last week that the Muslims, they've got all kinds of close-up missiles that, what, how are you going to knock those down? And if they happen to be nuclear, I mean, you're, you're spraying nuclear pollution everywhere right there. Mm -hmm. They're not. These are not launched from some distance. We got a real problem over there. Mm -hmm. We have the technology now for the Antichrist to trace everybody on the face of this earth. This is global positioning, the satellites up there, and they can tell where you are at any moment. We've got the technology for one man to rule the world with a, a, a number. <laughs> The international banking, the international corporations have really united this world in a way that, that would have been unimaginable uh, just uh, a century ago, okay? Now, we've come all the way to this. All the players are in place. Israel's back in her land with her enemies united around her. We've got all the weapons. We've got everything in place that the prophet said would be, and... God says, I've brought this to birth now. Am I going to shut the womb? Is this all going to kind of fall apart and it'll be another century or two or three and maybe we can get it all back in place again? In other words, Tom, what I'm saying is it's all in place. Mm -hmm. All the actors are just in the wings waiting to move on to the stage. And I don't think it's going to be shut down, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the last day signs, Jesus said, uh, as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, they're buying and selling and building and planting and... Giving and marriage. And, yes, marrying and parting and so forth. You see, it doesn't sound like something at the end of the Great Tribulation when the world has been destroyed. Not one of the main reasons, well, one of many reasons for believing in a pre trib rapture. Tom, I can remember, when was it, 85, I wrote, uh, oh my goodness. Peace, prosperity, and the coming holiday. Right, right. And, uh, or was it 83? Uh, it was before we wrote Seduction of Christianity. Mm -hmm. That came out in 85, I believe. Right. And at that point, I think the Dow Jones average was around 700. The interest rates were 23%. The Popular books were The Death of the Dollar, uh, The Imminent Attack of the Soviet Union on Israel, and so forth. And as you recall, my first chapter was titled A Contrary Scenario. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't think so. We're going in the other direction. Reaganomics is going to work. We're heading for prosperity. It won't be a real prosperity. We're heading for peace. It won't be a real peace. I mean, we're, this is the big movement today. Peace, peace. We've got to get peace. Uh, Dave, does this make you a prophet? <laughs> no, because I only followed the Bible. <laughs> no. It wasn't exactly. my prophecies. Exactly. Oh, you were pointing out of what the scriptures right. say. What, what I believe. All you had to do was not to read and right. have some understanding. What I believe it says. I remember when I wrote, mm -hmm. um, well, where's the down now? It's up around 11,000, 700 to 11,000. Remember when I wrote um, in 98, was it? 99. Uh, Y2K, a reason response to mass hysteria. And uh, 
And I, in that book, so come on, and doesn't that make you a prophet? Uh, no, no, because I only went by the evidence. Of course, it couldn't have, it couldn't have happened. But yeah. anyway, in, in my manuscript, you, you probably didn't know this, Tom. In my manuscript, I said, I don't remember where the Dow was at that point. I said, it probably is going to go beyond ten thousand uh, within the year. You know, something like that. And my wife told me to cross that out. <laughs> Don't get involved in that. Right. Um, but anyway, it did, of course, and it's been passed there several times. Uh, Tom, all I'm trying to say is I don't think that the prosperity that we have is solidly based. Mm -hmm. Awful lot of debt. Right. The United States, wow, in the trillions. Mm -hmm. It's an awful lot of debt on the part of everybody. You know, just watch TV or read the newspaper. Oh, they want to sell you this and that, and no payments for a year or whatever. Uh, we this is built on so much debt. What I'm trying to say is, Tom, I don't know how much longer this prosperity can hang together. But the Bible says the rapture will occur when they're partying and buying and selling and building and planning, and I don't see how this fragile situation between Israel. And the nations around her can survive much longer. And you know, Iran is determined to get nuclear missiles and wipe out Israel. And you know, we've talked about it on the program, you don't have to be a prophet. Israel is going to go in there and take it out. Mm -hmm. What that will cause, you know, the outrage, the cry, uh, like there was in 81 when they took out Saddam Hussein's nuclear capabilities. So, Tom, all I'm saying is, I don't think it can just kind of stagger on like this for much longer. Which moves us close to that point in history. That I think so. Predicts. Yeah. Next week, uh, the Lord willing, and of course, I always say, I hope the Lord returns before I finish this next sentence or this sentence. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now. Mm -hmm. And he will at some point, you know, and hopefully Maranatha, come Lord, come quickly. But next week, we're going to talk about the Antichrist, uh, what the Scripture has to say about it. Some people believe he's just a mythological figure. Some think that he's a personification of the devil. But we'll go to the Scriptures next week, and uh, we'll find out. One thing you can count on, Tom, and everybody out there listening or watching, you can trust the Bible. And when it tells you something's going to happen, it will happen. Please visit our website thebereancall.org to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to thebereancall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is thebereancall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our ebooks are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the scriptures 24 7. Don't go with me. I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back.